Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be doing another news and stuff video. This one is a little bit uh, closer in time than the last one that I posted, but there still seems to be a ton of things that I want to talk about. So again, just going to get started. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that the sequel to Caraval was finally announced. Um, it's Stephanie Garber's second book. It's going to be called Legendary, and we have another beautiful cover for it. I'm really hoping that the UK gets another gorgeous cover as well, because I can definitely foresee myself collecting these. This second book is going to be Tella's story, and I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. I loved Caraval so much, and I've been like eagerly anticipating this second book announcement and second book like release date and stuff, which speaking of, it's going to be coming out on May 29th of 2018, which is actually going to be my two-year wedding anniversary, and I am really looking forward to reading it, and I'm really, really hoping that Flatiron will send Stephanie to New York to have a book event because she wasn't here for Caraval, and I really want to meet her for the third time and have books signed. <laughs> Next I want to talk about a couple of Harry Potter things. So in what I'm sure is a surprise to no one, the Tales of Beetle the Bard illustrated edition was recently announced by Bloomsbury. That's going to be coming out on October 2nd of 2018 since we are getting a Fantastic Beasts um, illustrated book and now we're getting a Tales of Beetle Bard illustrated book. I have a hunch that in 2019 we might be getting an illustrated Quidditch Through the Ages book call me crazy, but I just see it coming. I am a sucker for anything Harry Potter. They can re-release the same thing with one changed illustration and I'll buy it because that's who I am. So I'm sure a lot of you are also in the same boat, but I'm really excited about this. I think it's really fun that they are just continuing to come up with new merchandise for us fans and just keep this fandom like truly alive because it is going strong and I love it. It makes me so happy. The next thing that I want to say about Harry Potter is that Alex and Annie, the jewelry company, they recently released a line of Harry Potter jewelry. So that was really cool. There are a couple of bangles. There are, I think, two pairs of earrings, a couple of rings, and and a couple of necklaces. I really like the Hogwarts crest necklace, so I've been kind of eyeing that one, but I haven't picked up anything just yet. Um, but it's really cute. I'm really excited that they added that to their line because I have a bunch of their Disney bangles from like past times that I've visited Disney World, and I think that it makes sense for them to do Harry Potter stuff as well. Another bit of really interesting news that's been announced is that Adam Silvera and Becky Albertelli are actually co-writing a book together called What If It's Us, and this is, I believe, the first time that this book is actually going to be simultaneously published by two publishers at the same time. It is a story of missed connections and it's going to be coming out in 2018, but it's being published by both Harper Teen and Balzer and Bray. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And also I love Becky Albertelli, so I am like just thrilled to have more books from her. Probably should have said this along with the Harry Potter stuff, but it's also been announced that a vinyl box set is being released for the first five Harry Potter movies. So it's going to have all of the musical score from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone through Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Not quite sure why they decided to break it up and then I don't know if they're going to be doing a box set for movies six and seven, but I know that I'm going to want the one for movies one to five. It's going to be coming out on November 17th, but it's a little bit on the pricey side because it does have so many records in it. But I feel like it's one of those collector's things that if you are like me and you're a collector of Harry Potter things, you will want this in your collection. Back in 2014, it was announced that Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks are working on a graphic novel together called Pumpkin Heads. I don't believe that we had the title of the novel, but we finally just found out that it's called Pumpkin Heads and we finally just got a little bit more information about it now that it's been like three years since the announcement. And there's also a little preview of it online that I saw on BuzzFeed, so I will Leave a link to that down below. So next it's been announced that Lee Bardugo is going to be coming out with a new book in 2019 called King of Scars and I think lots of Grisha fans will be very excited because this book the main character is Nikolai from the Grisha trilogy who is like a pirate character. I actually have only read the first book in the Grisha trilogy. I need to read Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. So I have not yet met him but from what I understand, he seems to be everyone's favorite character, so I'm looking forward to meeting him and I will definitely be catching up in time to read King of Scars. It's also been announced that Freeform is going to be having another television series based on Sarah Shepard's books. This is called The Perfectionists and it's actually going to have a lot of characters from Pretty Little Liars in it. 
it sounds like the actresses who played Allison and Mona are already involved in the project. I know that she has a book called The Perfectionists, and I believe that one's a duology much, definitely much shorter than the Pretty Little Liars books, but I'm not really sure how it's gonna tie in because from what I understand, those series are completely unrelated. So I'm curious to see what's being done, but I'm also really excited to have more Pretty Little Liars in my life. We got a cover reveal for Rage by Cora Carmack, which is the second book in the Roar trilogy. I have not yet read the first book, but I'm very much looking forward to, and I really like the second cover. I think it looks really nice. We also got a cover reveal for Arrow Shaw and The End of Time by Roshani Chakshi. This is her first middle grade novel that's being released by Disney, and I am really looking forward to this one because it is compared to Percy Jackson and Sailor Moon. I'm in. This one comes out on March 28th of 2018, and I think the cover is really, really pretty, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The next series that I want to talk about, I was really excited about this announcement. It's something just so, like, out of left field, but it sounds so interesting to me. So Kate Elliott, who wrote the Court of Fives trilogy, it's been announced that she has a deal with Tor, where she's going to be writing three new books in a trilogy called The Sun Chronicles, and it is a gender-bent Alexander the Great retelling. And the premise of this novel is awesome. So it is a gender-bent Alexander the Great as a space opera, and that just sounds really fascinating to me. Like, I'm very curious about how that would be done. Alexander the Great is such an interesting character, such an interesting historical figure, not character because he's an actual human, but I'm very intrigued to see how that book is going to be. We also got a cover reveal for Put In by Julie Murphy, which is the companion book to Dumplin', which was released earlier, and that's actually being turned into a movie right now. And then speaking of books that are being turned into movies, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertelli, we all know that's being made into a film, but they're actually changing the name of the movie and they're going to be calling it Love, Simon, or just Love, Simon. I really like the change that they're making to the title. Um, it's very interesting because usually they want you to know like that it's tied to the book, so they'll keep the movie and the book titles the same. But I think that this is a really good move for them and it's very cute because Simon and Blue write letters to each other online, so it makes sense for it to be Love, Simon. I think it's good. I think it's a good change. Disney is going to be making a new Hocus Pocus movie. Unfortunately, is a reboot, and I am just not into this at all. I really don't think that that movie should be rebooted, and I'm not sure if I am going to be watching it. I was very upset by this news. And then another piece of news that I'm also disappointed by is that J.J. Abrams is going to be adapting the anime Your Name as a live-action film made in the United States, and I personally am really worried about this. I don't think that J.J. Abrams is going to be able to capture the tone and the message of the original movie. I am very fearful that a lot of it is going to be lost in translation. I just can't see it working. I also don't think it's necessary. I think it's so beautiful the way that it is. Um, and part of what makes it so beautiful is all of the artwork and all of the illustration. So I'm at a loss as to why this is happening. Oh, and then also, so ABC now is going to be adapting a Sarah Shepard book, and that is The Heiresses, which is, I believe, a standalone novel. There were supposed to be more of them, but she's only published one of them, and it seems like plans for further books are a bit unconfirmed at this point. But Shay Mitchell, who played Emily on Pretty Little Liars, is attached to this new show. So lots of Pretty Little Liars, uh, shoot-offs happening. Ansel Elgort has also been cast to star in the adaptation of The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I have not yet read that book, but I am very curious about it. I thought it was so funny when I heard that news because I'm pretty sure that like the day before I had just been talking about how Ansel was in like so many things, like every YA adaptation ever, and then he just like stopped being in things and now he's gonna be an adult book adaptation, so that's cool. We also got a cover reveal for These Rebel Waves by Sarah Roche. I believe it's a trilogy and it's inspired by the Spanish Inquisition, but there's like magic and stuff, and the cover is like really cool. And that one's gonna be coming out in July of 2018. And then we also got a cover reveal for The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. 
Maureen recently came out with I Believe in a Thing Called Love and I really like her second cover as well. It is yet another example of where I actually like seeing a model on the cover which is rare but I think it looks really cool and I'm really looking forward to reading her next book. This one's coming out on May 8th of 2018 and it follows a girl who loves to like pull pranks and stuff and then she ends up getting punished by her dad and she's sentenced to work at his food truck for the summer and then she meets a cute boy. I've talked about the show a little bit before but I'm pretty excited to see the siren on Freeform which the trailer like does not look good if we're being honest like it looks bad but I'm still excited for it because it's a mermaid show and it's supposed to be a dark mermaid show. It's interesting. I'm cautiously optimistic for it but it's been announced that it's actually going to premiere on International Mermaid Day which is March 29th of 2018 and it's going to premiere with a two-hour uh, first episode. It's also been announced that next summer Timothy Zahn is going to be coming out with a sequel to his Thrawn novel which is one of the official canon books in the new Star Wars extended universe. The working title for the book is Alliances but it is not yet confirmed that has the possibility of changing. And speaking of Star Wars we just got another trailer and poster for The Last Jedi and tickets are currently on sale for the film which comes out in December which I am really excited about. So yeah let me know if you already bought tickets. I haven't gotten them yet because my movie theater tends to be on the quieter side thankfully but I'm really looking forward to going and seeing it opening weekend. Oh and JK Rowling's uh, Cormoran Strike series it's finally been announced that it is coming to the United States Unfortunately, it's going to be premiering on Cinemax, which is a channel that, like, no one that I know has. <laughs> it's going to air in June of 2018, and it's going to be called CB Strike, so it's having a title change. But I think Cinemax is under the, like, it's either the HBO or Showtime umbrella or something, but it's, like, one of those channels where you have to pay even more to get that. So I just can't keep up with all these streaming services lately. There are just too many of them to subscribe to, and I don't think anyone... Uh, has enough money to pay for the one channel just for one television show. That seems so crazy to me. So I want to see it, but I just don't know how I'm going to at this point. And then the final thing that I want to share is that Funko is going to be coming out with a second wave of Sailor Moon Funkos, and I'm really excited about them. It's going to have all of the scouts from the Outer Senshi, and there are a couple of of exclusives that are being offered and the one that I am most excited for like in this entire line of new Sailor Moon Funkos is the Toys R Us exclusive of Queen Beryl. She's so cool and I can't wait to get that one. <laughs> so that is all the news that I had to cover in this video. There was quite a lot of it so let me know what you're most excited for and I will see you guys soon in a new video. Bye!